and it is the year of his vengeance, and we're going to see it. Hallelujah. Things are happening. God is very good all the time, and he is for us, not against us. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Master. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you got a divine call. Turn to 1 Corinthians 4, please. Verse 1. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ. That word Christ means anointing. And what is the anointing? It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Make sure you know that. Because this is essential. What is the anointing? It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That's everything of God. That's what the anointing is. It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, all wrapped up in one, came into this world, into a body named Jesus. But he was the anointed one, and his anointing. So Christ is not Jesus' last name. Amen. It's Jesus the Christ. So what he's saying here says, let all humanity, mankind, consider us as servants to the anointing. Amen. So we are servants to the anointing. The anointing doesn't serve you. We serve the anointing. I think many people have that confused sometimes. He says, so let all the world consider us as servants to the anointing and stewards of the mysteries of God. Why? Because the mysteries of God are in the anointing. Then he explains something what, about stewards. He says, moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. So there's a connection here. He's saying, my faithful ones will maintain and walk in my anointing. But my ones that are not will walk away from my anointing. Many people walk from under the anointing of God Almighty and don't even know it. For years, and they don't know it. Hello? He says something also powerful. He says, but with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I'm not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Why? Because the anointing is also considered, it's like a rub. Rub. In other words, you are in such close relationship with the Lord that it's his presence is rubbing off on you and there's an exchange of presence because you're close rubbing off on one another it's a point of contact therefore judge nothing before the time until the lord comes who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart then each one's praise will come from god remember we are servants to the anointing then stewards, we are holders of revelation knowledge to those who are faithful, who are consistent, who are alert. The anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. The intent of the anointing, the intent of the anointing was to set apart an individual for divine use or call. To empower and overcome every evil and all evil forces of influence so that they may accomplish every assignment associated with their calling. See, certainly, I'm going to say this again. Take shorthand. The intent of the anointing is to set apart a person for a divine use or calling.
to empower them so they overcome evil forces of influence so that they may accomplish every assignment associated with their calling. Has everybody got it? <laughs> okay, get the tape or VD or DVD, whatever. Anyways, I'll say it one more time. The intent of the anointing is to set apart an individual or a person for divine use or call. So that they may be empowered to overcome evil forces. Empowered to overcome evil forces. Of influence. So that they may accomplish every assignment associated with their calling. So that they may what? Accomplish every assignment associated with their calling. In other words, God does not anoint an assignment that's not of your calling. Does everybody get it? See, God has a specific anointing for every assignment that's associated with your call. So many people are trying to fulfill somebody else's call, but there's the anointing's not there. Not everyone is called to be a pastor. Not everyone is called to be a carpenter. <laughs> not everyone is called to be something. Even these talents and abilities, not everyone. But see, with the anointing comes talents and abilities. When you begin to fall out of or try to fulfill another call, the anointing will never be there for you. You'll do it in the flesh. I never asked to be a pastor. I was invited to be one. See, if you're close to the Lord, your desire is everything to please Him, whatever it is. You are not looking to anything to fulfill but Him. And then things come. One day He said to me, well... I was invited to be a pastor. I said, Lord, I'm not a pastor. He said, you'll be whatever I tell you to be. Okay. That was not my desire. But as I began to accept the call, the invitation, because that's what a call is, the anointing came, and then the desire followed Everybody get it? So many people are trying to bring the anointing to the desire, and that's not how it works. Does everybody get it? It's the anointing that creates the desire. See, when people, this is why it's so important to come out of the emotional state. That's why he says, deny yourself. Come to the end of yourself. Then there is no emotion there. There's only peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, which is the anointing. And when you stay there, the anointing will bring the desire. Is everybody okay? But see, so many people are grabbing desires. They're trying to fulfill everybody else's call. And they come into confusion. Frustration opens the doors to familiar spirits. And everything else that can torment you. Is everybody okay? Does everybody understand this? Man, we can't lose sight of this because right now is so important because there are so many people not only walking in mixed anointing, but walking out of the anointing into another call that God never called them to. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 26. That's why it's called a divine call, because it's an anointed call. You've been invited to fulfill a purpose of God. In verse 26, for you see your what? Calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. 
But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that were, which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ, you are an anointing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. See, you were invited to fulfill a divine purpose <laughs> prepared specifically for you. And you are invited in the training process. <laughs> and the purpose of that is coming to the end of yourself so that you can fill the call. Because self can never fulfill the call. See, there's an exchange made. You step into the new spiritual man. Amen. The physical man never can accomplish what the spiritual man can. Each assignment will come with a special anointing and meets us to serve. See, so many people are going, I'm waiting for the anointing to come. No, you move and the anointing meets you. Does everybody get it? Well, I never felt the anointing. No. When God says go, when he tells you, you know what's a part of the assignment, you move and the anointing meets you. If he says go pray for someone, you may sit there and wait all day for the anointing. It ain't coming. Until you go. He meets you all the time. Does everybody get it? Each assignment will come with a special anointing. And meets us for service. Did you ever realize, look at, look, you know, sometimes when you get invited and you go somewhere and whatever, and you're kind of nervous because you've been asked to speak, and you're waiting for the anointing, and they're like, oh, God, where's the anointing? I ain't going out there unless the anointing comes. Well, you better go out there, bro. And next thing you know, you get out there, and the anointing comes. And you become another person. How many times did you felt like crap? You felt ill. You felt this. You felt that. Every kind of feeling was attacking you in every way to keep you home from getting in God's presence. And once you got in God's presence, the anointing came and you became a different person. Amen? Because God met you there. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. See, but so many people, because they're emotionally entangled in themselves, they allow their emotion to dictate their choices when God is trying to meet them, free them, deliver them. And they recycle all the time the same stupid mistake because they're not allowing God to take position. They're really not allowing God. The Lord really take the position so that they can be led. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. There's so much. Isaiah 11. I want to prepare my people because they're going to have to be in position for what's coming. Because if they walk out of their call and try and fulfill something else that I've not sent them to do, they're going to get swiped out. Now, um, not only does an anointing meet you, okay, but there's a time when you catch the anointing. And there's, a, there's an area where the anointing is inherited. Does everybody understand that? Um, that's why in the Old Testament and, and so forth, when they would lay hands on individuals to pass on the anointing because it was inherited to them. But they served under that anointing. 
Remember when Elijah and Elisha, amen, he received the mantle because the anointing, he was inherited the anointing because he served, you inherit the anointing you serve under. Hallelujah. Isaiah 11. But you got to be faithful. In verse 1. Let's speak it together. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall be a what? Upon him. Here it is. Are you ready for this? This is powerful. The Spirit of the anointing is the Spirit of the Lord. Who is the Spirit of the Lord? The Holy Spirit. Amen? So the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. The Holy Spirit, the anointing shall be upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Again, the spirit of the anointing is the Holy Spirit. Anointing, because there's a point of contact that's happening in relational contact with the Lord. It's relational contact. Why? Because the anointing also means to rub. Amen? Amen. You're rubbing by his presence on you. In this, you carry multiple characteristics or what we call assets of assistance with divine wisdom. This is all inherited with the anointing. The wisdom, the understanding, the counsel, the might, the knowledge, the reverence and the fear of the Lord. There's a reverence that you carry. Only through the anointing can this happen. When you lose that reverence, it's because you walked away from the anointing. Everybody get it? Hallelujah. Now, again, these attributes, which are seven attributes, are inherited in the anointing, with the anointing. You carry these with you. It's with you. Now, there's an anointing that is placed that you live in. It's abiding in you all the time. The eternal presence and power of God Almighty. Abiding you. That's why you get convicted and so forth. The Holy Spirit is living in you. But, you know, you can ignore him. But he's there. But then there's anointing that comes on you with service. It comes on you to do something. Amen? There's the kingly anointing, the priestly anointing, and the salvation anointing, representation of all three chambers of the tabernacle. So when you first got saved, you got saved with the salvation anointing. After you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, you had a priestly anointing. Now as a priest that ministers to the Lord, you press on, you become a king, a warrior. There's a warrior, a kingly anointing, like David. David was a minister to the Lord for many years. And then the anointing came on and he became king. Amen? But what is the anointing? This eternal presence and power of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Look at verse 3. He says, and, and this is what's going to happen with the anointing. You will delight in the fear of the Lord. You'll delight in it. And you shall and you won't judge by what you see. And this is what Christ is doing. Nor decide by the hearing of what your ears. Why? Because you're going to have a knowing that's beyond all that. This is called beyond common sense. The anointing doesn't associate with common sense in that arena. There is an a knowing in the anointing that supersedes everything. It says, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the, the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, hallelujah, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness shall be the belt of his waist. Again, we know that this is, he's talking about Jesus with the anointing, but again, we are the offspring of the anointed one and his anointing. We inherit these things. Is everybody okay? You have a divine call. 2 Corinthians 5.
There are people in the body of Christ that are anointed as newscasters. They're anointed to do websites. God has anointed them to do many things. Does everybody understand that? Look at how many musicians there are. Awesome music. But it, so because God has anointed that person to fulfill a function in the body of Christ, when they're fulfilling their call, what they produce will be anointed. But if not, they're not fulfilling their call, what they produce will not be anointed. Does everybody get it? Because it's the anointing that transfers to the anointing. But if all the, the anointing of God will always back the call. Always. Hallelujah. That's why we got a lot of people falling. We got a lot of preachers falling. Pastors and all kinds. Why? Because they were never called to be that. That's why the Lord called them hirelings. Many did it for money. I'll never forget the first time I, I was at a doing some work at a, a church, and I heard the pastor in the other room. And I heard him saying, yeah, I'm thinking about leaving this place. They don't pay enough. I'm going to another place. And my spirit was so grieved. I didn't, I didn't, I was a baby in Christ. I, I, I couldn't believe what I heard. I said, why, why is that man, why is money making his choice, Lord? I didn't understand. And the Lord said, because he doesn't know me. He's fulfilling the position to get for money. He doesn't know me. I didn't place him there. I'm telling you, I was so grieved. I couldn't believe what I was hearing in my, in my ears. And I was in another room right next to it. But again, there's many people out there fulfilling their own call and not the call of God. And I believe many of them will come to the Lord. That's when he says, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, I did this, I did this, I did this. But it wasn't fulfilling the call that God gave them. That's why it's so important to wait and know and be directed. That's why God has offices in the body of Christ to help people guide them into their call and purpose. Amen? That's why counsel is important. That's why submission, obedience. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 16, please. <clears throat> Everybody okay on that? Are you getting this? Okay. You know, and, and also the anointing teaches us, doesn't it? So there's a time and, 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 um, and assignments that God anoints but when we complete it, it's done. So some people want to continue on with that assignment, but it's over with and the anointing's lifted. There was a certain, a specific thing that God wanted us to learn from it so we can learn more and grow more. Hallelujah. Verse 16, let's speak it. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. He Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in the anointing, he is a what? Oh, my goodness. Come on, grab that. Drink it. Eat it. If anyone is in the anointing, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if the individual is not walking in the anointing, the old is still there. Amen? The same mindsets, the same character, the same reactions. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, there's been a heart change. <laughs> in the anointing, the new creation grows and the old man goes. I'm going to say it again. In the, in, the new, in the anointing, the new creation grows and the old man goes. With a heart change of reconciliation. And there's a desire to reconcile all humanity to Jesus. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Verse 19. That is that God was in Christ, in the anointing, amen, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of the anointing of Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you as Christ, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Again, in the anointing, the new creation grows and the old man goes. He gets a new heart change of reconciliation, desiring to reconcile humanity, all humanity, to Jesus. As ambassadors of the anointing comes the ministry of reconciliation. That is a part of your call in reconciling the lost to Christ. There's a desire there all the time because the anointing is always drawing. As God is in the anointing, and he is the anointing, Amen. First John chapter 2 and verse 20. What does it say? But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. In other words, is there anything that the Holy Spirit doesn't know? No. And so if he's dwelling in you, that doesn't mean he's going to tell you everything. Hello. It doesn't mean you're a dictionary. Hello. But what pertains to you, to your call, you will know. There will be a witness. There will be an unction. You'll know. But again, it's the anointing that brings the desire, not the desire that brings the anointing. Hallelujah. Glory. All right, let's go a little further. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lies are the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies Jesus is the anointed one? He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you or cause you to walk away from under the anointing. But the anointing which you have received from Jesus abides in you, and you do not need that anyone should teach you. In other words, the anointing is always teaching you. We don't want some preacher to teach us. We want the anointing to teach us. We pray that the anointing released here is teaching us. I ask every time, Holy Spirit, what do you want to tell your people? I don't go for hours trying to find something. He comes and brings it, downloaded just like the matrix. Hallelujah. <laughs> These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from Jesus abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. But as the same an anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. In other words, so we want to maintain that area and abiding in the things that he's taught us. Remember, the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. The anointing, this is going to sound a little strange, but the anointing will bury your old man. It's a bur burial process. Remember when, G before Jesus went to the cross, the alabaster box, the anointing, when all the disciples were like, man, that's worth a lot of bucks, man. That's worth a lot of money. What are you doing breaking it and letting it pour out? Jesus said, stop it. That was for me. Why? Because it was for his burial. Does everybody get it? The anointing oil in the alabaster box was for his burial. So for me and you, the anointing is always willing to bury the old man because we are dead to self and alive in Christ. Amen? 
Oh, hallelujah. See, that's where people, you find out whether they're walking in the anointing or not is if they're denying themselves. Or that they're self-promoting. Selfishness. Selfish ambitions. You can remember the core of their heart is the desires, right? If their desires are out of order, hello, then they're not walking in the anointing or they're not walking in their call. Romans 14. to school and for anything. Amen? But if that's not part of your call, you waste your time. You can be successful in everything in it also. But if God hasn't called you to it, it's not a part of your calling, you won't be rewarded for it. Does everybody get it? You can't be. Because God will not reward the flesh. He rewards the anointing. That's why you got to be close. That's why you, you got to acknowledge him in everything you do. Verse 16, Romans 14, 16. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as what? Evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, or righteousness, peace, and joy in the what? The anointing. Amen. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the anointing. When we step out from the anointing, <laughs> the mind refocuses on self, fear, pride, and lust. I'm going to say that again. When you step out of the anointing, the mind refocuses on self, pride, fear, and lust. Second Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure. What is that treasure? The anointing. In earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. Does it confirm <laughs> the anointing? Yeah. So what is that treasure? It's the anointing, the eternal presence and power of God Almighty. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body of the dying Lord Jesus that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are, are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is working in us, but life in you. Ooh, hallelujah. Now, we have this anointing in these earthen vessels, excellence of the power of God Almighty and not of ourselves. It is a treasure. Amen. Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. He just said don't grieve the Holy Spirit. From what? What comes out of your mouth? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Of the things that you speak, you may grieve the Holy Spirit and walk right out from under the anointing. He says, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all what? Malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. <laughs> don't grieve the Holy Spirit with words of corruption because you'll end up walking right out from out underneath the anointing. Psalm 51, in verse 10. Creating me a what? A clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And do not cast me away from your what? 
your presence. And do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Hallelujah. Again, let's speak it again. Create number 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. <laughs> Don't cast me away from your presence. Keep my heart clean. Amen. Isaiah 61 from verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. This is the anointing. This is why the anointing for service. Amen. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn and counsel those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So when the spirit of heaviness or oppression comes on, you start praising God. Why? Because the anointing will come and break its yoke. That they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. Hallelujah. That's what the anointing is for. Me and you. Serve it. Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Why were they considering all these individuals? Because they all had an anointing. Amen. They all carried a specific anointing for their calling. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the anointed one, the son of God. You're the anointing, the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says and said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also will say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, on this revelation, on this anointing, I'm going to build my church. On the anointing, not on a pope. Amen? On this rock, on the anointing, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. See, the powers of darkness fear the anointing. But if they can convince you <laughs> in your mind that you're afraid of them, it grieves the spirit and the anointing quenches. And he says here, he says, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail, and I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. See, we are anointed by the Holy One, and he holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave. <laughs> and he's given us the authority to bind and loose. That's what the anointing is. So what you're binding, what you speak here in the physical is binding the powers of darkness in the spirit. But it must be backed by the anointing. Does everybody understand that? Because if it's not backed by the anointing, it ain't binding nothing. If you're walking and living a life of disobedience and rebellion, you, the anointing's not there. The anointing is sustained by submission and obedience in everything. Amen? Hallelujah. Mark 16, 16. He who believes. What's the word believe mean? Follow. 
He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. Who does not what? Follow. And these signs will follow those who believe or follow. Why? Because in the anointing, in my name, they will cast out demons. In the anointing, they will speak with new tongues. In the anointing, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. This is why, because of the anointing. Amen? These are all attributes and signs that will follow the anointing. And I'm going to close it, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and be, peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, the divine nature is manifested through the anointing. Without the anointing, there's no divine nature. Amen? But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Why? If you're fulfilling your call, that's backed by the anointing, you won't stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Divine nature, divine call, divine anointing. Amen. It's all available for me and you. But we want to make sure that we're walking in that anointing. Amen. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. It doesn't mean you're perfect. But we just don't want to grieve the spirit, do we? We don't want to walk from underneath it. We don't walk want to walk away from it. But there are things that will grieve the spirit that he'll stop and we're still walking. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. And we thank you, Lord, that you're preparing us for what's coming. Because the enemy is trying to quench the anointing. Trying to grieve the spirit of God that's within us. So, Lord, we just ask for more visitation, revelation, and impartation. We ask for forgiveness of every time we've grieved your Holy Spirit and that you'd keep us with a pure heart, clean hands, and take not your Holy Spirit from us, but maintain us in your presence. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.